Okay, so today we're going to look at experimental probability. Now, um, you can imagine rolling a dice, and you've got, in theory, one in six chance of getting each number. But in practice, that doesn't happen all the time. You might get a bunch of sixes in a row. You might not get any sixes at all for a while. So, all we know is that, in theory, there's six sides, and you've got a one in six chance of getting each, then the probability of getting the six is one in six. But in practice, let's have a look and see what happens. So I've got random.org, which is a website that does um, a lot of different random things. So it could be random number generators, random ordering of things, but it also rolls dice. So what I've got here is I have selected two dice and if I click roll dice then it shows me a six and a five. Now that doesn't mean that half of the time I'm going to get a six and half of the time I'm going to get a five. It doesn't also mean that the next time I'm going to get a four and a three and the time after that a two and a one probability is a bit more random than that and there aren't so many patterns so I'm never gonna know truly what's going on if I just roll the dice twice I've got to roll it a bunch more times than that and I've got to keep track of my results so if I start a table and I I've got a six and I've got a five then I roll it twice and I collect some results. So another couple of times and I've got a one in the six. Then I got a two more sixes. If you were to stop at this point, you'd think, well, you're going to get six loads of times. But let's see what happens if we carry on. Got two fives that time. I got a three and a five that time. I got a six and a four. I got two and a three. I got a three and a one. And I got a one and a five. And the last time I'm going to roll it for this time, I got a one and a four. So there we go. I've rolled it 20 times. And I've got a bunch of results. I've got every number at least once. Um, let's add them up for the totals. And we've got, I got one four times, I got two once, I got three three times, I got four twice, got five five times, and I got six five times. I could plot that in the graph, and you can see there visually that five and six came up the most, two came up the least, and it's all bumpy. And if everything was expected, to have an equal chance of happening, surely you'd expect that all of those totals would be roughly the same. All of those bars in the bar chart would be roughly the same height. But unfortunately, it doesn't work exactly like that after only rolling it 20 times. I'm going to have to roll it a few more times and make a note of a few more results. To, if I want to try to get a better understanding of this, because 20 times, even though it might seem like a lot, you can see from the results it's not actually a lot. So um, if I change the option from rolling two dice to rolling 40 dice, and I keep my other results, so I'm going to add on to my other results rather than starting again. So 40 dice. There they are. I can add them all into the tally. And then let's get another 40 dice. And add them into the tally. And now that makes 100 dice because I rolled them 20 times to begin with. Uh, two at a time. And then a couple more 40s makes 100 dice in total. So let's total them up and let's 
draw a graph. And you can see now that um, it's still a bit bumpy, but there's not the extreme that there was before. Let's compare it to the one before. You can see much more extremes on the rolling 20 dice graph. You can see that two is really low compared to how high the five and the six are. But now the gap between the lowest and the highest isn't as much. It's still bumpy. You're going to have to do it a few hundred more times if you want it to start evening out. And it'll start evening out for a couple of reasons. Um, the reason one is the more times you do things, the closer you get to actual uh, theoretical probability. Because if you if you do it just six times, it's foolish to assume you're going to get each number once each. But if you do it 6,000 times, it's more appropriate to expect you'll get around 1,000 times each. And the other reason is the scale on the graph. The scale on the left goes up to 6, and the scale on the right goes up to 20. So even though the difference between the smallest and the highest amount is the same, so on the left, the smallest and highest amount for the bars, the gap between them is 4, and the smallest and highest amount on the right, the gap between them is four. Because of the different scales, that gap looks smaller. So if you did it a few thousand times, you might get a gap of 15 or 20, but that gap would look tiny because of the scale used. So we rolled the dice. We rolled it 20 times, we rolled it 100 times. What's the point of this? So the point is to try out a formula. We've got a formula, which is, if we want to calculate experimental probability, the formula we use is number of successes over number of trials. So that is for things which either we don't know the probability of, or we're just checking the probability of, or we're unsure of the probability of. So for instance, let's imagine that we're just checking the probability of rolling a dice. We know the answer. Um, we know that the probability of getting a six on a dice is one in six, but we're just checking experimental probability to see what we actually get. So when we rolled it 20 times, successes, is in this case number of sixes and number of trials is how many times we rolled the dice so five over 20 because we got five sixes out of 20 dice rolls and on the right we got 20 out of 100 20 sixes out of 100 dice rolls and what we know to be true theoretical probability is one out of six. Now, those numbers are pretty difficult to compare because they're all different denominators. So if I turn them all into decimals, they're going to be easier to, to compare. So 5 over 20 is 0 0.25. 20 over 100 is 0 0.20 and 1 over 6 is 0 0.17. So we can see the true theoretical probability is 0 0.17. When we only did it 20 times, we were a little bit off. It was an overestimate. But when we did it 100 times, we're getting closer. And you can imagine if we did it 1,000 times, we'd be closer again. 10,000 times, closer again. So the things I want you to take away from this lesson are that this is the formula for experimental probability and how it works and that the more times you do something the more accurate your results will be okay so your actual work for today what i'd like you to do is i would like you to do a tally and a graph for rolling dice 
Now, if you've got dice at home or a Monopoly set or something, you can use them. Or you can use the random dice roller, which I will put a link to in the assignment. And I'm not going to put a restriction on how many dice you should roll. Because I'd like this to be completed today. I'm using up about 10 minutes showing you this video. And so if you've only got time for 20 dice, then do 20 dice. If you've got time for 100 or 200 or whatever, then do that as well. But make sure you leave yourself enough time to tally all up, draw a bar chart, and calculate your experimental probability of getting a six and see how close we can get it. Okay, and I don't mind if you want to use computer software like I did to draw your graphs. It can be done in Excel, but if you're not familiar with that, then I would suggest just doing it by hand. As always, if you've got any questions, ask in the chat. And that is everything for today.